So, hi there, this is Pauline Crawford Oms, and uh, I'm known as uh, the ambassador of Magical Conversations and sometimes Miss Magical Conversations, but I'm here today having a magical conversation with Alan Stevens, who's actually, as I'm in Las Vegas, he's actually in Australia on the other side of the world, uh, near Sydney, but in a place called Newcastle. And he runs the Campfire Project, which um, is to help men to be men. Um, so tell, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Alan, before we start this conversation. Oh, well, first of all, um, why I'm running the Campfire Project now is because of things that have happened to me in my life. I was uh, three when my father died. So I grew up in a household with my mother and uh, older sister. Didn't really have any male romp models around me at all. Um, I actually had one uncle who, when I got married, told my fiance she could do better than me. So I grew <laughs> up with that sort of stuff all the way through. Around about uh, when I was 23, I'd been working in our, what was uh, called our Postmaster General's Department here in Australia, did my training. And at the end of it, they turned around and said, right, there's a job in Newcastle for five months. It's a temporary transfer in charge of a group of people. And we want you to take it on. So I'm 23 years old and I'm now working with men who were, well, second in charge was 38 years old. So I had to get men on side, all yeah. those group there. Then as I got into my mid thirties, I got involved with the surf club and did my bronze medallion. And they taught me to be a patrol captain. Of course, gave me everybody that no one else wanted. Now I knew why they got me to take the role on. <laughs> and that uh, became the patrol of the year. Next year, wow. they wanted me to be the club captain. I ended up looking after three uh, beaches as a, surf, um, as a as own supervisor. And I kept that squad together, promoted yeah. one of the members of the team to the uh, patrol captain's job. And they won the award again the next year, even with me being separated from all the decisions on who would win. So I learned going through being younger and uh, being um, uh, least experienced and then having to get uh, men on side, being the youngest, that was one thing. But now working with the surf club where now I was on the board with everybody else, same age as me, but those men had been there since they were young kids. And as they pointed out, Alan, you've only been here five minutes and I'm telling them what to do. So yeah. now I'm the least experienced, well and truly. And in my late thirties, my first wife left and I had uh, three boys to raise. They were four, 11 and 12. Wow. So all the way through, everything about me has been around relationships. And yeah. a lot of the way through, I've been testing the waters and trying to understand what I should be doing. And in my um, uh, late forties, just going into my you know, 50th year, uh, through some chance happenings in my life, I connected with an Aboriginal group who then invited me out bush and on a regular basis until they finally turned around and said, right, it's about time you went through your initiation. Wow. And that's when I understood the rites of passage that men don't have today. That's we grow amazing. Up and we're shut down from everything around us. We're told boys don't cry. You know, you're supposed to toughen up and everything else. So we have all these misnomers and don't know where we are. And yeah. the biggest thing is that I realized most men don't know their role in business and they don't know their roles in their family. Yeah. So I thought campfire project, put that together. So it's a safe place for men to give themselves permission to tell their stories. So I interview the men one on one and then I bring them together in panels and we discuss issues that are happening today. And the other men are listening in. And by the way, the group does have uh, women in there as well. Excellent. So Excellent. Closed group so that it's a safe location. If anybody's disrespectful, male or female, they're turfed out. They don't get yeah. back in again until they've changed. So they come back and give it as good reason as to why we should let them back in. It was so that create a safe location so that men could give themselves permission. The women are now, I'm interviewing women and bringing them into the panels next. So we have conversations between men and women. Uh, and that's pretty much me in a nutshell and what the Campfire Project's all about. Well, that, that is fabulous. And for me, it, it, it's really enheartening that these things are happening all over the world and you know we know that they're happening in the uk where i'm from but i'm in america now learning what's going on here so my question today is um as the audience know and you know i'm very passionate about men and women coming together but let's just focus on men what do you feel if, from your experience and having three sons and all that you've told us what's happening for men today though generally across the world i mean there's a lot of pressure on the mm. mandates in the boardroom, me too. 
what's the general feeling men feel about themselves? I think there's a lot of confusion. There's also a lot of fear. A lot of fear. Um, we, we talk about equality, but we don't have equality. We just keep creating new fractions and that becomes the, the main thing for today. Yeah. You know, like if it, it was me too, and then it was men too. While we have these little groups, they don't connect and talk to each other. And we're yeah. finding that the stories are coming through are changing all the time. We've now got this thing where it's, you know, you'd say to somebody, boys will be boys and you're in trouble. Well, boys will be boys. They, they're not dinosaurs. Yeah. They're not uh, cats or dogs. They are no. boys. But the boys are hearing this and they're not understanding what yeah. the adults mean behind it. So we've got all these boys now who are so confused and so worried that they are, they're wrong because they're boys. Yeah. So we've now got a lot more gender issues and you know, the fluid uh, side of things, it's causing more confusion. Yeah. We don't have the role models. What, what, in, in, what interests me well about the word confusion is that it's, um, it's messy. It, mm. it's, you know, fear is, is in a way clearer. Conflict, fear, we know what that is and we know what clarity is. Confusion to me is like um, like being in a mist, and mm. and the and and what's interesting is over the period of a year that I've been interviewing men, every man has said this, and when I tell women and they watch, they say, well, why are they confused? But the confusion is real, isn't mm. it? it and is. as you say, it's breeding confused teenagers as well, which is very dangerous. And that's it. You've got boys coming through and they don't know what their role is. You know, we've got a lot of pornography out there at the moment and the boys watch that and the expressions on the women's faces in that, they think that is normal. Yes. And this is one of the reasons why there is so much um, relationships between the boys and girls going right, going the wrong way yes. because of that confusion. I know in Holland, I think it is, they act, uh, show um, in sex education uh, man and woman having sex together, not the body, just the faces. So they see the expressions and they go, ah, oh, that's the expression I should see on the woman's face. Yes. That's different to what they're seeing in pornography. Yeah. So we've got all of that stuff going on. We've got men who have come through who have quite often haven't been raised by men. Yes. They haven't had positive role models around them. And so they don't know what to do. They don't know how to guide their children through as well. This is one of the reasons why we need the elders. We need uncles we need other men around who yes. can step in and take those roles on because i found out when i went through rite of passage my job was not to make a man of my sons my youngest boy followed me through initiation and when yeah. i took him out to voice the elders said to me well what do you want us to do i said my job was to get him here your job is to take him through yeah. and they said well what's your job i said you've got sons and they went you've got it <laughs> so that's when it because yes. they were damn good teachers and i listened and learn from them. And I applied that love, humility, and respect are the three main things that they teach the boys. I love think for that's mother, very good. Yeah. Women. humility. Yes, you can be proud about who you are and everything mm. else, but there's a humility that goes with it. There's no arrogance. And it's all about bringing boys into manhood. And manhood is not to be the man, but to be a man. A man, yes. Yeah, because if you're a, a the man, you're looking over your shoulders, a lonely place, you're competing with everybody else to be in front. Yeah. But if you are a man, you're connected to everybody else around you, your family, your children, all the other men. There's no competition. And we're there supporting and guiding each other through. Yes. So we are students and teachers all the time. Yes. I really like that. And I think this whole idea of respect, in fact, um, one of my interviews said about modern chivalry. And I wonder whether chivalry was a word that the younger kids would actually even recognise. No, well, I think we'll probably don't even watch anything. You know, I know knights of the round table and all that. They yeah. wouldn't understand that. That's all fairy tale stuff. But That's right. putting it in modern terms that they can understand and grasp. Yes. And it's about, it's about love, isn't it? It's about love, not fear. That's um, it. But it, it, what, what if I find really interesting is that we do need that safe space. This is what mm. my passion is about magical conversations. It's a safe space. Uh, mm. Although there was one interview where I said safe space and they said oh that's a very female word but 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 it doesn't it me does mean important for men doesn't it it is you know if you think of the generations as baby boomers ours was all about security yeah and so that is a safe place our and parents went through yeah. two wars two depressions it was struggle where's our food for today 
it's like Maslow's hierarchy and needs. We were the next generation or the next step up in that. Yeah. We yeah. wanted security. So security is safety. Yes. And you don't have the higher levels of self-actualization or anything else until you go through the basic needs at the bottom. So we all need to be safe. Everybody needs to be loved. They need to be valued and yes. they need to feel that they have a purpose. Yes. If you and, do and that with people. Yes. And a sense of achievement. That's, that's the other it. thing that we need yes. as human beings. Um, so what about the differences between different types of men? Because it's something that I've been studying that there are different types of women and we look at the world in a different way. Is that true with men? That, as I observe, there are different types of very, men. Yeah, very much so. And for probably a lot of us, we've lived through different styles as we've gone through. Because I said that rough tumble, you know, boy, you know be a man and everything else. Mm. Don't cry and wipe the tears away and all the rest of yeah. it. We then put this front up. We had to be tough. But inside, we're screaming little boys. We're, tired, we're, we're scared. We're, you know, we're looking for, for a hug. But then yes. to actually turn around and let somebody hug us, that's really difficult. We go bush and all the other men are around. You hug every man who's there. That's part of the greeting. And there could be 120, 200 people there. Yeah. So you're so hugged the, out by the end of it, I can tell you. That's right. So the other thing you, you mentioned before, before when we were talking about being an old boy. Mm. That was an interesting yeah. expression. I never heard about that. But, but that yeah. as preference well, to being a man. That's it. Well, think about it. We give people the uh, title of man and woman when they get to a certain age. Yes. Well, really, in my case, as I said, I grew up uh, following my father's details. What I knew about him, his memory. On my 50th birthday, as I was cutting the um, birthday cake, I remembered I stole part way down. Everyone was looking at me. I just realised in that one moment, I was now older than my father ever was. So how was I going to follow anything he'd done from that point yeah. on? I felt totally lost, but it was lucky about that time that I was also going through the rite of passage. So I realized at that point, I was no longer following somebody. I, had to, I was in the caboose of their train, but now I'm the engineer. Where do I go to from here? Yeah. And that's when my journey started. And I started looking at it and thinking, so many things that I was doing, they were boyhood. They weren't really manhood. I didn't have that understanding yet. Yes. And so so it, let me ask you something, because I'm intrigued. I have a son and a daughter. Um, so in your a magic wand, you would want every man, every boy to go through this rite of passage. Exactly. But not, not every man, not every boy does do that. Well, so, very few do. Yeah. So is that where some of the, um, the sad stats are in the world about mm. boys, suicide and, uh, you know, D destruction by argument in the boardroom and the block of women into the boardroom and this is where it comes from that if we could actually encourage all men to have that rite of passage mm. but do does that mean that every man needs to literally go out to the jungle or no it's no that was my way of doing it because it really got away from what i was presently doing yeah. go through something that was completely new and a new direction it was a real awakening for me whereas by just having the right men around. Okay, you might find a family is broken up. The whole thing is that both the husband and the, or the ex-husband and ex-wife really need to focus on the child's the most important. They need to build a relationship regardless of what their feelings are for each other. I realized that with my three boys as I were growing up, mm. if they didn't respect their mother, they would not find the right women in their life. They wouldn't respect other women. Yeah. So I realized I had to create a relationship with her, even if I didn't want to. In yeah. that, that was, oh, that was when uh, my oldest at that time was uh, about uh, 16. And my, and he's now 40 years old, so a long time ago. Yeah. And we built a relationship to where if it was a birthday party or a Christmas party, we would all meet at one house. If it was her house, I'm at the head of the table. That's where she put me. Yes. So I was more the head of the family than I'd ever been before, simply because of the relationship and the way I treated her. Yeah. Then she needed somewhere to stay for three months. And this is several years back. And uh, I had a spare room and she said, well, can I just be a lodger, you know, have you use your, um, your spare yeah. room? And yeah. I went, right, this is my life. That's your life. This is the work I do from home and all the rest of it, respect to each other. Well, she stayed for three and a half years. <laughs> and so, okay. So when people say you can't get on with your ex and everything else, no. 
have a look at it. And I realized that to deal with her and have a better relationship with her was real easy. Yeah. I could look at the things I didn't like about her and be angry with her. Or I stood back from, I said, okay, what did our union bring together in that marriage? Yes. Well, three boys that I love and respect that have turned into really great men. Yeah. So for that, that's what I focused on. All the other stuff didn't have the impact on me now because that's where I'd set my, my focus. Yeah. And I that's think that, that's really, really good advice. And, and I, I, I had a similar experience. Um, I split up with my husband after 30 years, but we always stayed friends. Sadly, he's died mm. now. But, you know, there was, he, was, he would come to family parties. He loved my family. They loved him. You know, if we didn't have a problem with each other. And, and I feel even now that he's passed on, he's still there. Uh, because we had a lot of time together and we produced two beautiful children. And I think people need to get past their, uh, get past themselves, you know, get past that anger. Um, and it isn't about he did this, she did that. It's about who we are as human beings. And there comes to a point where we don't, we don't yeah. need to be together anymore. You can still be okay. That's I really it. admire you on that, Alan. I think that's really, really good advice. When you separate from your partner and you keep that anger, it's not going to be too long before you lose your children as well. Yes. The boys are going to look at their dad as being the first, uh, their first hero. The yes. daughter's going to look at the dad knowing that, well, if this is the man that's in front of me, this is sort of uh, what I can expect in a partner. Yeah. So if you want your daughters to find the best men, be the best man yourself. So they learn, because telling them is no good. They need yeah. to observe it. They learn through observation. And it's the same thing with the boys. They're going to look at the nurture and everything else they get from their mother. Yeah. So she needs to be able to connect with them. My three boys, as they were growing up, they'd all said to me, look, it's great. And I go, boy, what's great about our relationship? So we've got two houses to go to and there's no bagging. Of, you don't bag mum, she doesn't bag you. Yeah. We're happy in both houses. And I said, well, what about your mates? Oh, their parents are all fighting. You realise that's <laughs> why, because you know, I yes. work from home. When we come home from school, there's 15 kids in the house. Yeah. And I went, oh. So yeah. just remember what you tell your kids will pass over, but what you do will remain forever. I totally agree with you. And that's the same with all relationships, isn't it? You know, mm. that if we hold on to anger and vitriol and, and bad words, um, toxic behavior is toxic behavior. It should not be, a, should not be commended that's at it. all. And then that's why when we have these fights about toxic masculinity or toxic femininity, I go, it's just toxic, you know, like, yeah, that's it, you know, and everybody has their own version of that. There's, you know, um, it's about listening and sharing, caring and respect and all, and all the things that w we would applaud. So, and I know you're, you're uh, as we come to the end of this interview, which we could go on more, but I know that you advise uh, men and boys all the time, but what one piece of advice would you give to a man out there who's never been to a campfire special? What would you I would suggest advice? that they, and most of them you'll find are probably separated from other men. They're out there trying to do it on their own and understand and therefore no support coming in. Find a group that you can go and, uh, and uh, meet with. Find the men's groups. But find ones that are talking positively around women, not negative. The yes. first thing I did when I put the campfire project out was I went after all the men's groups who were out there, found who was running them, realised yes. they had a passion if they were running a men's group. They'd be articulate because they were money running the group. But then it was having a quick chat with them and then bring those ones in that were more positive about creating yes. relationships improving the lives of men, but not by dragging women down. I interviewed them. And the reason I did that was they then advertised the talks I do in their sites so that we're yeah. bringing more men into the campfire project, not taking people away from their groups, but networking out, networking all the men's groups all over the place. So find some uh, uh, groups that do that. Okay? Yes. One of the things I'd recommend is come along to Facebook and find the campfire project and join us. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So one last question, Alan, what advice would you give to women to understand men? It's not to judge first of all, but to sit down and ask their point of view as well and trying to understand where they're coming from. Mm. In all respect, it's always listen to the other person. If you don't agree with where they're coming from, ask them why they're thinking that way. Yes. You know, we had some boys at the primary, at the high school and men were, fathers were invited in to hear their sons talk about the, um, uh, their attitudes towards the girls. Yeah. When we started, it was horrible. But when we went through the hypotheticals, if that's the case, and what about this? As the boys reasoned it out, I watched these boys go from very small boys to very tall men. 
in oh, the spring. Oh, that's lovely. So with those sort of groups, think, yeah. sit, the women, sit down with the men, ask them, don't judge, keep asking questions as to why. The men will work it out themselves. You can guide yeah. them without yeah. them knowing that you're guiding them. That's excellent advice. And it's very aligned to my work with Magical Conversations, which is about no judgment, no anger, and no urgency. And this has been a magical conversation, Alan. So anybody listening, um, please go and find Alan Stevens' uh, Campfire Project. It's on Facebook, yes? Yes, yeah. it is. It's you can Facebook. easily find me on my uh, Facebook page. It's, it is Alan Stevens, but also because I'm a profile in the media, call me the Celebrity Profiler. If you do a search on the Celebrity Profiler, you'll also find me there as well. Oh. And you'll find the posts on that page about the campfire, so you can locate it that way as well. Excellent. And uh, when I post this up, we'll post those links as well. And I will look forward to being on your um, panels as well. Uh, I'm um, looking forward to it. So that's the next thing we've got to organise. Yeah, definitely. So we'll finish this interview here and uh, stay on the line. And thank you, everybody, for watching this. And remember, when you're watching it, listen carefully to what men say. It might just make a difference in your life. Thank you. Thank you.